The Midnight Dance by Cartoon Nerd 12, Chapter 2 Fluttershy laid in the flower bed of the gardens, crying with the animals around her, consulting her. One white bunny she named Angel was stroking her mane to calm her down. Meanwhile, inside of her suite in the castle, Rarity laid on her red sofa, bawling her eyes out with her cat Opal, giving her a look of concern on the bed. In another part of the castle, the gymnasium, Rainbow was blowing off steam by punching dummies with her pet tortoise, Tank, looking on with fear. Pinky was also in her room with her hair straightened out and coated in a bit of grey as she started using a sack of flour she called a Madame Le Fleur, a bunch of rocks she named Rocky, and a bucket of turnips named Mr Turnip, and a piece of lint named Sir Lintzalot. She imitated them of how life can be so unfair, while her pet alligator, Gummy, watched on with no expression. Applejack lay on her bed, staring at the ceiling, feeling miserable to the core. Her dog, Viona, had her head on the bedside, looking sad for her mistress and whimpering. Twilight had her head on an open book in the library, not feeling in the mood to read anything. Her companion, an owl she had named Owlicious, nudging her head in sympathy. Fluttershy slowly got up as her tears ran dry from sobbing too much. She wiped them away. A couple of birds then circled around her. You want me to sing? The animals chattered and nodded their heads. I suppose you think it might make me feel better? They nodded again. Okay. She closed her eyes and started humming and twirling around. She vocalised. As she did, a long figure moved from shrub to shrub, watching her sing. Just then, an off-key voice sang while something held her arms. The animals complained and covered their ears while Angel threw an acorn at the bad voice. Ow! Hey! She gasped and turned to face a creature with mismatched animal body parts, having horns and red and yellow eyes. But her face soon softened and smiled. Discord! She ran to his arms for a hug. My dear Fluttershy. He had her look up at him. I'm so glad you dropped by. Indeed, he put her down. I came not a moment too soon when I found out about this. He snapped his tail and it held out a, no a newspaper, having a picture of Spike showing off the proclamation. When did this happen? He demanded. Just today. Mother told me and my sisters that we would have suitors. What? Val, that's a no low. Even for Tia. He crossed his arms. What am I to do? I don't want to marry someone I don't know, but I don't want to disobey my mother. Well, you should. What? Come on, Fluttershy. This isn't fair to you or your sisters. I say you and I, he coiled around her. We run away and never look back. Discord. As much as I want to get away, I cannot leave my family in worry, she said firmly. Fluttershy, I refuse for you to be submitted like this. He yelled, floating in anger. She arched her eyebrow. Why does it bother you so much if I do? You're my dearest friend. Ever since I knew you in the maze, I thought you were just a statue. But when Mother told us you were real and alive in stone, I wanted to free you and help you be better so you didn't have to live in that awful prison anymore. And I'm very grateful you did, he put. He floated back and landed on all fours, looking at her in happiness. Mother warned me, however, of your past crimes, and that I had to be careful. But I knew I was making the right choice. And I know it wasn't a pleasant first meeting. You did scare me. His ears dropped back in sorrow. She smiled back at him and touched his paw. But I went past it and tried so hard to befriend you. He too smiled and said, I must admit, I thought it was all a game to you. But when your sisters were upset and disgusted with me, you stood up for me, and I was very touched. For the first time in my life, I had a friend. And you still do. And more. Well, only because I stay on your mother's good side, and as long as I am still in your favour. Granted, my sisters still don't trust you as much as I do. But I don't care. Oh, darling. I could care less what others think of me. Your opinion is all that matters to me. 
Which is why I am upset that you're allowing yourself to be a prize for some no-good cult who doesn't deserve you. How? She blushed. How sweet of you to say. Well, his eyes met hers. To Fluttershy, they were gold with rubies in them, glimmering away. And to him, hers were like a sea-green ocean, with the sun reflecting off, shining bright. It's the truth. You deserve so much better than to be submitted to this outrage! He growled. Please, Discord, she begged. I need to do what is right. She slowly turned away from him and walked away, feeling the weight of the world on her shoulders once more. When Discord came by, she wasn't sure why she felt her spirits lifted. With him around, she felt happy and less scared. But now, by leaving him, she was sad again. But if there was one thing he did right for her, it was that he set her thoughts straight. She reminded herself that her family came first. And if it was her mother's wish to marry a noble, then that's what she would do. Discord watched her go in silence. He wanted to stop her, but he knew that once she set her mind to something, she would see it through to the end. He wanted to tell her that he loved her since he was upset to learn she was about to be married off to some pathetic regent or other, but why make a fool of himself if she didn't return those feelings? Fluttershy had never once gave him a clue of her liking to him like that. It pained him to see her so unhappy, and it pained him more that he would never get to see her again. With his head down, he snapped to teleport back to his living area. Rarity wiped her eyes with the lace handkerchief as she slowly got up to move to her vanity to reapply her makeup. A knock came at the door. Enter, she said, keeping it together before having another breakdown. Fancy Pants entered the room. I just came by to offer congratulations on your soon-to-be engagement, your highness. He tried to say it without voice in the head. Fancy Pants! She practically shrieked in his face. How dare you say such a thing! I refuse to go through with this. Tradition is one thing, but this is downright ridiculous. I cannot marry a cult I never knew about. This simply isn't done. Beg pardon, your majesty. And that's another thing. You never used formalities when we are alone. Why have you stopped calling me by my name? Well, I... I figured, in a time like now, you would want me to... Never! Never in a million years! I want you to use my name, because I feel I can be myself around you. And you can be yourself around me. She had big sapphire eyes when telling him this. Rarity, he whispered. That's better. Now, back to the issue at Hoof. I will simply tell my mother that I will not be a part of an arranged marriage. But isn't this about her taking care of you? I'm sure she only wants your best interests. Well, my best interest is that she calls off this whole thing. She stomped out of the room. She felt upset that Fancy Pants would take her mother's side in this mess, and she herself would rather have him fighting for her and to declare his undying love for her. She could hardly care that he was a servant in the castle. He would always be of high class in her eyes. He also listened to her and her opinions, and, in turn, respect she respected his. But not this time. This was a personal matter she intended to settle right here and right now. Fancy sighed as he watched her go. She was extraordinary to be willing to fight for her own right to marry whoever she wanted. He wished right then he told her how he felt about her, but then resorted to cowardice. He feared the Queen would find out that he loved her daughter, and would fire him. As much as he loved Rarity, he needed to keep his job. Applejack lifted herself off the bed. She was done with her moping. By then, a knock came at her door. Come in! Spike walked in. Hey, Apple Bloom was starting to get worried that you haven't come down by the kitchen yet to make pies for tonight. Don't worry, I'll be there. I'm not gonna let some suitors get in the way of doing my duties to help every pony. She grabbed onto an apron in her closet. AJ... Do you know how the rest of your sisters are taking it? Especially Rarity. Well, Sugar Cube, 
Rarity was the one who took it the hardest, along with Dash and Pinky. Twilight, Borasha, and I did get upset, but I think we'll be over it soon. What makes you so sure? Because I've gotten over it. I still don't like it, but I may as well keep on moving. And I didn't want to say nothing, for I didn't want you to get hurt. But maybe you should move on from Rarity? You know she was always out of your league, anyway. How can you say that? We belong together. I just know it. Spike, you do her favors, but she hardly returns it. What does that say to you? He went deep in thought and said, That she's waiting for the right moment. He had hope in his eyes. She sighed, thinking, What's it gonna take to make that dragon see the light? She knew for a fact that her sister had a thing for fancy pants. Of course, she hadn't told them that, but it was kind of obvious, just like Spike with his little crush on her. Then again, why did she care so much about him getting over his crush? Could it be she liked him herself? No, it couldn't be. It couldn't. And yet, maybe? You okay, Applejack? She found herself staring at him with those big, cute green eyes, the same colour that matched his fire. Something inside her stirred, seeing how adorable he really was. What? Oh, yeah, I am. Uh, I have to go. She galloped out of her room with Spike looking back on her with, with confusion. Rainbow had eventually gone outside to do some cloud busting to keep her distracted from her thoughts of suitors and marriage. She was so into it she didn't notice a light blue Pegasus stallion heading her way and kicked her hind legs to the clouds, nearly hitting him. Whoa! He dodged. She heard him and turned to see her favourite Wonderbolt. Oops, sorry, Soren. She gave him a cheesy grin. Had I known you were angry, I would have just come back the next day or the next month. He joked. <laughs> you goofball. But a very wise decision. Nevertheless, if you're one of those pompous princes or snobby regent, they would be flying through the air even if they didn't have wings. He gave a slight laugh. I believe it. He grinned. Suddenly, she let out all of the emotions that she had bottled up inside her. Just why? Why did this have to happen now? We were happy. I was happy. Then she had to go and ruin it by saying we have to get married. She crossed her arms. You, you weren't planning on getting married at all? He questioned. I didn't say that. I would like to get married someday. But not right now. Not with some pony I don't even know. I hear you. Just, why is the Queen enforcing the marriage law on you guys? She claims she's doing this for our benefit and making sure we're taken care of. What a bunch of baloney. Yeah, right. He hesitantly said. It had never occurred to Soren that he might not be able to support a princess. As a Wonderbolt, sure, he had enough to get by himself. But for a princess who had everything in her life, how could he fulfil that? He couldn't ask her to give up everything for him. Being the awesome princess she was. Yahoo! She waved her hoof in front of him. Earth to Soren! Huh? Oh, sorry. He rubbed his neck. Listen, Dash. Uh, I mean, princess. Princess? But you never... Perhaps it's time I do. Seeing how we won't be able to see each other again, he said solemnly bowing his head and starting flying away. Rainbow was flabbergasted as to what she had just witnessed. What? Soren! Soren! She called out to him, but he just flew out of sight, leaving a trail of dark smoke, his signature Wonderbolt mark. She couldn't believe it. Her head was overwhelming with more bad news by the minute. Now she'd just lost the only cult she had ever really liked and her lips trembled from fighting back tears. Soren lagged in flight. His heart was in pain with what he had to do. He had no choice but to let her go. He had to keep telling himself that she would be better off without him, but his heart said otherwise. Cheese had a basket of goodies in his mouth. 
He thought the stuff inside would help Pinky with the latest development that's happening. Luckily, because he had to deliver party things to her from his shop before, the guards knew who he was and let him pass. Occasionally he would do something funny for them, but not today. Not when news reached that the princesses were to marry any time, and he knew that Pinky wasn't going to take it lightly. Once he reached her room, he knocked and heard a gruff voice say, Who is it? Pinky, it's me, cheese sandwich. Cheese? A small voice replied, followed by a branch accent. By all means, let the gods come in. He opened the door and was shocked to see her hair down and her coat having a bit of grey to her normal, beautiful, lively pink colour, and saw the objects behind her. Oh no, he yelled, I'm too late! He knew that meant when she was upset, Pinky would act more crazy than usual. Pinky, snap out of it! He grabbed a hold of her and shook her. Oh jeez! She sobbed to embrace him, blowing into his shirt. It's awful, just awful. I know, he whispered over her shoulder, patting her back. I don't want to get married. His eyes widened. You don't want... I want to marry the cult I love. A relief washed over him. For a second there, I thought you didn't want to get married at all. No way, silly. When I do marry, it'll be for love. I thought so. He grinned, then reached into the basket and said, Hey, look who I brought. He held out a rubber chicken. Her hair immediately poofed back up at the sight of him. Boneless! She took the chicken and squeezed it in a hug. Boneless was Cheese's companion in the shop, and whenever Pinky came by to pick up supplies, she and him would always play with a chicken. And he's yours to keep in a time like this. Oh, Cheese, really? She questioned him with her big blue eyes knowing he would rarely part with bonus. Really? You need him. You need... He wanted to say, me. But quickly went through the basket and took out a rubber duck, frog, ball, and a few other things that were made of rubber. His pals! Cheesy! You're the best! She hugged him again. Just promise me that you won't go up the deep end like what I just saw, okay? Not that I don't love Rocky, Madame Lafleur. Mr. Turnip and Sir Lancelot, they're a lot of fun to hang around. She went behind each object, imitating a voice. We love you too, cheese. Using Madame Lefleur. Yeah, you're alright, for a bono, began Rocky. You're a good one, moving Mr. Turnip. And finally, Sir Lancelot, just make sure you don't stay away too long. He chuckled. I won't. Just make sure Pinky doesn't shut away from her family. Of course not, but it might take some time to go near my mum again. I understand. He himself was upset at the Queen for doing this to her. I have to get back, but if you ever need me, I will. She touched his cheek. He slowly moved away. Well, goodbye. He left the room. Goodbye. She clutched onto Boneless, silently thinking to herself how she was falling for cheese sandwich but couldn't feel full-scale love until now. He managed to cheer her up in her darkest hour and gave her his most valuable companion. She wished with all her heart she could marry him instead. Cheese sadly walked out of the castle, looking back up at it. He hoped that Pinky would be all right. As much as he wanted to tell her he cared about her, it was impossible now that she was about to marry someone else and he couldn't get his or her hopes up and make things worse in the end. He wanted every pony to be happy, even if it would make him miserable for the rest of his days. Twilight walked around the library, putting books away. She sighed, for she knew what she had to do as her mother had requested of her. It was time to gather her sisters and talk about this marriage business, whether or not they wanted to be a part of it. She herself wasn't sure if she wanted to, but as long as she didn't know some stallions like some of her sisters did, it would be easier for her to get married, as it was expected of her. Before she left the enormous collection for another day, she wished, as she did all her life, that she met that one very special sun pony that she was destined to be with, just like in her storybooks since she was younger. With another sigh, she went to retrieve her sisters. 
An orange pegasus in golden armour roamed the streets of the small village called Ponyville. He stopped to look down at his map that he had bought. Okay, I'm in Ponyville now, so Cantalot should be north of here. And the fastest way to get there is through the Everfree Forest. He looked up to see the dark green forest ahead of him. He stared at the spooky sight before him, but he took a deep breath and proclaimed, Well, no use gawking over it. I've got a commission to fulfil. He put his map back and started walking along the forest path when he heard howling in the distance and stopped in his tracks. Alright, maybe this wasn't the best place to get a count a lot. He was about to turn around when he heard yelling. On instinct, he ran towards the elves and came across a clearing where a cloaked figure was standing in front of a timber wolf. He noticed the figure was yelling in a strange dialect he was unfamiliar with. The timber wolf was getting closer to the figure. He knew that he had to do something soon. Then he felt a small rock in his hoof and grabbed hold of it before throwing it over the wolf's head and shouting, Hey! Over here! He flapped up for the wolf to see him and gave chase. He kept flying for some time until he saw that what was up ahead. There was a rocky cliff and a loose boulder above, giving him an idea. He landed at the edge to face the wolf as it bared its teeth, growling at him. At the very last moment, he caught the wolf off guard and pulled a vine attached to the boulder. With a rumble, the huge stone fell over and crushed the timber wolf to pieces. With a sigh of relief, he went back to the figure that was in trouble with the wolf to begin with. Are you all right? he asked. Fine, fine, dear Eggwine. The figure spoke and removed her hood, and he was surprised to see a zebra before him. By use of the vine, you have defeated that enemy of mine. The Pegasus wasn't sure what to say, since he wasn't sure if zebras were good or bad. Stories said that they were strange and used magic for curses, but some said they were good and could heal by using remedies. From the look you give to me, you are surprised by what you see? His slack jawed at her statement of being able to read his mind like that. She let out an easy juggle. I assure you, I am not all of that bad, for I would like to give a gift for being a brave lad. She took off her cloak and offered a gift to him, but he was uncertain. Have no fright, it will not bite. He released a stifled laugh and took the cloth. The thanks. Bear in mind, for it is a cloak of a special kind. He wore it, and the next thing he knew, he turned invisible. The colt was amazed and took off the cloak, turning back to being seen. He smiled back at the zebra. Yes, that will be needed for when things get heated. What do you mean? That I cannot say now. But for you to discover when you know how. She started to turn away. Wait, don't go. Do you know the how way to get to Cantalot? The path that you see shall take you to where you need to be. Thank you. What's your name? Zekara is my name. Do you have one to claim? He bowed his head. Flash. Flash sentry. <laughs>